life, you are new here, I'm Ganeti, and if you are already watching my One Piece Chill channel, welcome back. Today we are reading chapter 1103. I actually thought it's a break this week, but actually the magazine is on break and the chapter is available on other sites. Uh, so we are going to read it and if you are not up to date with manga, obviously there is a spoiler alert, but let's see what this chapter has. Let's Oh, there's a pretty cover for Jump, I think, like, a, a New Year-style cover, everyone, <laughs> everyone is in dragons, is inspired suits, um, all the characters from different Jump manga, and of course, Luffy is in the front, it looks adorable, um, I love the shade of green, and there's also a message from Oda Sensei, Happy New Year, my resolutions are to have more barbecues and draw even more fun manga. What does he mean? <laughs> draw more of One Piece, finish One Piece and draw a new manga. <laughs> that is fun and to have more barbecues. Okay. I guess one can coexist with another. But if he wants to draw more manga, it means less barbecues. Any, in any case, we also have a colored cover spread it actually has Yamato on it that's interesting because it's like all straw hats but that might be because of the dragon because yes yeah, see Runasuke is also here I was going to say like oh many people wanted Yamato to join the straw hats crew I was kind of in the middle I would be okay if they joined and I wasn't too upset when they didn't so but I think it's like for the dragon theme here. Oh, look at Frankie's hair. Might be my favorite part actually here. It looks so cool. Oh, th this is a very cute color col spread. There's something written on Luffy's shirt. There's no translation. Maybe it's something like dragon. I don't know, mm, unfortunately, but for example, on Zora's shot, it's written in English, dragon, uh, so might be, and everyone has t-shirts, well, Junpei doesn't have a t-shirt, but <laughs> in general, everyone has clothes with, oh my gosh, Nami's dragon is so adorable, okay, this is cute, very uh, many adorable details, and yeah, now we go to the, to the depressing chapter, Bonnie finally knows chapter wait the number the name of the chapter i'm so sorry daddy oof yeah okay bonnie you saw everything i did that's uh, the dialogue of uh, bonnie and vegapunk so i guess it's still like a bit of a um flashback because right now is yeah <laughs> it's not where we are right now in the present now I've really done it. I broke my promise to Kuma. Vegapunk is upset, but she's hugging him in her actual, like, real form, in her small form, and saying, I'm so, I'm sorry, Vegapunk, and crying. Oh, that, that is cute. Because she was mad at him. She thought, okay, it's all his fault, but now she realizes that it's not. Yeah, he, he, he did it technically, but it's not really his fault. Old. What's that? A gift Kuma left with me for your 10th birthday from dad. That's great. Oh, that's cute. A sapphire necklace. How pretty. And it's also like a jewel. Again, going back to that theme, him calling her like illness stones here, jewels, her adopting the name Jewelry Bonnie, and here also sapphire necklace with a jewel, obviously, sapphire. It looks like the sun. That's an interesting point, actually. I'll treasure it forever. He said it's a protective charm. I w is, it, is it also, is it just a pretty jewelry that he found that looks like sun and he thought she would like? Or he, he doesn't say that it's like has history, but he says it's a protective charm. I'm just thinking like sun, is it also somehow connected to Nika? But it's the first time we see it. Honestly, though, it's hard to believe what that kid has become after only two years straw hat so he's the son of dad's old buddy right i'm just i was thinking about the jew so much i i was starting to read that luffy is the son 
not as a child, but as a son that is a star. I'm like, wait, what? Indeed, I was stunned when you both showed up together. Fate is a strange thing. Yeah, and by the way, like, she now also knows that because I'm sure, like, she didn't. But now, uh, watching this whole flashback, like, she saw all of it. So she knows now everything that was in it. A lot has happened on Egghead, Vegapunk is explaining. While you've been in that room, the Straw Hat crew saved me just now, in fact. I'll explain everything. We can meet up with them when things have calmed down. I'm sorry for everything, Bonnie. Now you know how worthless I am. A mere scientist for hire, following his orders. You are wrong. The true villain is him. And now we go to the present, to the true villain. But like the, the villains... Well, not in this story, but like Gora say in general, <laughs> like the villains of the whole One Piece story, right? You would say. Uh, yeah, well, it, it was nice um, to see the chat of uh, Bonnie Vegapunk. Oh, there's a double page. The present, Egghead, New World. So it's like, an, well, the flashback has already ended the kuma flashback now we had like middle flashback of her conversation uh with uh, vegapunk and now like yeah we like, fully go to the present egghead new world jury bonnie the pirate your father kuma is truly dead saturn is saying maybe that's like also i'm still like debating is there hope i think vegapunk said it's not possible to get him back and uh, saturn is also now saying he is truly dead but he we have been given that information that vegapunk did devise a strategy uh, to get kuma back to normal to get to flip that switch and uh, it could still be a little bit of a twist um, so I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about it we got this full like flashback of kuma after everything after that emotional goodbye he could st like truly be dead i will i will ex i'm kind of expecting both outcomes uh, i wouldn't be surprised if they say that that's it like he's dead there's nothing you can do and i wouldn't be surprised if they say oh vegapunk did install that switch and it works and we can do it and Kuma can be saved. Happy ending, rainbows, sunshine. You know? Damn it, why can't I move? Sanji screaming, Pony! Frankie yells, and oh, poor Luffy begs for food. Someone give me food, meat. I wish I, I would if I could. But my boy, like, eh, nobody can move because maybe of uh, Saturn's conquerors, Haki being so strong and like Luffy could overcome it, but he needs food, he is out of fuel right now. Vegapunk's bodyguard is in custody. Oh yeah, I repeat, we've got Santamaro, we can see Santamaro is alive, but um, bounded like by, I don't know, by ropes maybe. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Kizaru is also a bit of out of commission, or pretending to be out of commission, and he is worried about Santamaro and Bonnie. That is cute. Any word on the status of things up there? We can't confirm the situation, since Commodores and below aren't allowed to approach. A siege involving an emperor. It will be a miracle if there's no casualties. Oh, people are also reading the newspapers. A, a little bit of newspaper reading in different parts of the world. The scale is bigger than the O'Hara incident. Please be safe, Dr. Vegapunk. Oof. That's, that's, you know, that's a comparison. That's a comparison. Assuming there's still a trace of Kuma in... The, okay, now we go to revolutionaries. Dragon and Eva are talking. Assuming there's still a trace of Kuma in there, where would his instincts take him, Eva? Dragon is asking. If it was me, I would storm Marijoa for some payback. I, I mean, that's exactly... <laughs> Dragon is saying, but this, uh, no, no, wait, that's, we can see by the words, this is still Eva talking, but as we know, Kuma is different, we actually saw him 
storm in Marijo. But yeah, he is not the kind of per like we know him pretty well from the flashback. He is not the kind of person who just goes for revenge for payback. You know, he is a very kind person. He only fights when he needs to protect, so to say, right? Um, next page, back to Egghead. If I'm gonna get killed here anyway, Bonnie is saying, then distorted future, Nikaish future. She uses her attack with the big, uh, big arm, and Saturn thinks to himself, what Nika? That must have made him feel something, right? Let's see, what the, I suddenly feel weak again, what, oh, she looks... I feel so bad for her, she looks so, ooh, on this panel, dang it, and she went for the attack, but he grabbed, well, he was grabbing her anyway, so what is the difference, did she land the attack, it, it looked like she kind of was going to, but then she suddenly felt weak again, maybe he kind of, Weakened his hold on her, so to say, but now he is affecting her again. So you do know that name. You really are his daughter. That being said, you don't fully understand its meaning, Saturn is saying. And thinking to himself, it seems she hasn't drawn the connection between Nika and Straw Hat's new white form. And says aloud, how pathetic. I'm like... I've, yeah, that would be interesting, because if she does draw a connection, that should make her, like, our very loyal ally, I think, immediately, uh, if she sees that Nika in Luffy, I think, right? Where did that food come from? Who is responsible for... Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> There's, like, small panel under him saying how pathetic. I was like, what, what, what's going on there? I need, <laughs> I need the microscope. Uh, but actually, Luffy is eating food and kind of getting very plumpy. Where did that food come from? Who's responsible for this? Put him in sea stone cuffs immediately. I wonder if that was Kizaru. He's like also super fast. He could just go and get the food. Get him! And like everyone is running to Luffy. Nothing is explained about the food. We get a panel of Kizaru. He was just lying on the ground. Now he's sitting, uh, resting on some rocks. And I think like I, it's not actually sad who got the food here. But I think Kizaru is so fast. He could get there real quick, get that food. Because he was thinking, he was worried about Santa Maru, about Bonnie, and obviously we saw uh, him having some bones with people here on the egghead, with Vegapunk, with Bonnie, with everyone, and <laughs> we saw them spending nice time together, and even he was present for the Anika dancing, you know, uh, so, uh, yeah, he could very well, it would be really cool, I think, if he did that, because pretty much he was uh, doing everything that he was told by world government always, so it would be really cool for, to see if for him to do something like that and actually aid Luffy here because he sees that Luffy could save his friends. What's with this Jizzer? Bonnie is thinking to herself. I can't even change his age. Ooh. Because maybe that is interesting, actually. Maybe he doesn't have age. He is so super old. You have to go like many, many years in age changing. Bonnie, you owe that power of yours to me. Huh? We conducted experiments to determine whether extract infusions could grant a baby an ability without feeding them the fruit normally. It was a success, but the fruit itself is useless now. Wait, what is he talking about? Wait a second. When did she get her abilities? It was sudden. We didn't really see her eating the fruit. Does he mean that... Wait. No, she was... She was born already right um yes and tra just transported on the ship as a little baby and he says we conducted experiments to determine whether extract infusions could grant a baby an ability without feeding them the fruit normally so she didn't eat the fruit some infusions happened when she was a little baby when she was still in marijua she was experimented on somehow and then the ability didn't just reveal itself until a bit later 
Do I need to re read the flashback already? I'm like thinking about it now. Uh, but then CP didn't know about her abilities. That's actually what helped Bonnie escape. Uh, but as um, Saturn is saying this, it means uh, he was well aware that these abilities could develop in Bonnie after these infusions. But now he says the fruit itself is useless now. So does he mean that they made the infusions and even though the fruit is intact, uh, since it gave its powers to Bonnie, it is useless. So you can use the fruit this way uh, without eating it, but it, as long as someone gets its powers, you can't give infusions to another person and like, duplicate the powers, which makes sense for the devil fruit rules, right? Its ability can transform you into a state that matches any future perceived to be possible. Yeah, that any future perceived to be possible. I think that also could explain uh, why as a granny she looks like Connie. It doesn't mean actually that they are related. It's just maybe a possible future. And as a granny that she saw that was an example for her how granny looks was Connie. It might be that explanation that we are looking for, that maybe they're actually like not related. There's no relation to look for. There's no hidden um, like secret here. She just perceived that, oh, in the future as a granny, I'm going to look like that. Uh, so, and yeah, that's also the fruit that really works with that Nika theme, right? The theme of the future. But that means the possibilities become limited as your future becomes more certain as you uncover the truth. Though it's also kind of a bit psychological. <laughs> Nika is just an impossible myth you wanted to believe in. Wait, wait, is this Kuma? Did he really? Like, because I was like, wait, why didn't he go just straight at Egghead? To Egghead. And someone pointed out in the comment that he still needs to mount and go through that red line to get to Egghead. That he can't just teleport through it. I was like, okay, maybe that is uh, some kind of uh, force field that I didn't take into account. And right now on the panel, we actually see Kuma flying in the air. So maybe he's... He's coming, he's coming to protect him, because that makes sense. If he regains some consciousness, what would he want to do? He would want to protect his daughter, he would want his daughter to be okay. And for the world of One Piece, it's pretty realistic in my opinion, because we've shown many times that there is some like feeling, some connection between parents and children. And even a Dragon maybe felt that Luffy is going to be in danger back then in the very beginning of the manga when he went and protected him from smoker it might be not just like logical conclusions okay he's gonna be there smoker is gonna be there it might be dangerous maybe i'll go just in case it might be just this parent intuition you know and i feel like we've seen other examples of this really strong connection between parent and a child between siblings for example so it's totally possible that kuma just came somehow to his senses, at least partly, and he, or at least like his instincts uh, woke up and he felt, oh, I feel that my daughter is in danger. I have to go and help her. Okay. Nika is real, she is yelling. I've been looking for him to save dad ever since you turned him into your cyber slave. Yet your sudden weak weakening proves you are starting to doubt whether he ex his existence is possible. Saturn is saying it would be cool. Well, she already saw Luffy's form, though. I was thinking, like, yeah, he said she didn't draw the, con uh, the connection. Uh, but if now her belief is weakening and Luffy comes as the sneaker, that would also strengthen her belief and strengthen her powers. Your father just passed on a worthless Buccaneer legend. He once told me he wanted to save people, just like Nika. Your mother being brought to the Holy Land to be wife number eight is ironic, really. She ended up being part of my drug experiments. Um, like the other failures, she developed Sapphire scale. So that's how she got the illness. Wife number eight. <laughs> she ended... Wait, 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 wait. She is 
So does he mean that she herself was getting these infusions so that her child is born? No, no, he said... Hmm, I couldn't grant a baby to determine whether extract infusions. He didn't say we gave it particularly to you, Bonnie. So maybe actually Ginny was receiving... I'm already like forgetting her name slowly. Um, was receiving these infusions while she was pregnant to check if her baby is going to be born with the powers. But there were a lot of failures. Maybe there were some other experiments as well. And uh, like other failures, she developed Sapphire scale. So this illness also comes from these experiments. I knew the results were poor, but to think the condition passed on to her child as well. Yeah, it did. And he didn't expect it. What? Bonnie is obviously shocked. Imagine, like, hearing all of this, like, well, she knew something about her mom, right, uh, from the flashback, but we, we didn't know, like, exactly what happened during her life uh, on Marie Joa. Five number. Is like number eight also important? The way he says it, he kind of uh, highlights that she was number eight specifically. Does this have some significance here? Wow, something landed over there. Okay, that's Kuma, that's Kuma. Everything, it was all you. Oh my gosh. I know Bonnie's expressions are just like super on point in this chapter, especially. Like every panel, you can see her feelings and it's really heart-wrenching. And, oh, oh. Experiments? How dare you, Saturn Vegapunk is yelling. Those sapphire scales tore Kuma's family apart. They're the reason he threw his life away. Well, it's kind of also the reason she got to go back. <laughs> well, <laughs> she died on her way, unfortunately. But at least she brought the baby home. I'm thinking if she didn't get that illness and the baby was born here, Bonnie would stay there at Marijoa. So at least kind of... Kuma and Bonnie reunited, but of course that's all kind of moot point because if it wasn't for this stupid world government and celestial dragons, she wouldn't have been taken away, stolen, kidnapped as a wife number eight in the first place. <laughs> so, those sapphire scales tore Kuma's family apart. They're the reason he threw his life away. You used it as a bargaining chip when you were the one responsible. Okay, he is talking specifically about the situation because Bonnie had these sapphire scales. He, Akuma, had to give everything, give himself away to heal her from this disease, to keep her alive. I look at it from my perspective, Saturn is saying. I, I know from egotistical um, perspective of someone who wants to stay in power and wants everything belong to him. Do you comprehend the feelings of the insects you step on? Of course not. And he like even, yeah, he said it before, I think, uh, it might be in some other words, that he just sees people, other humans as insects. And we saw like there is something definitely up with Gora say We saw them as these like, crazy shadows and he, uh, we can suspect that they have lived for very long. So um, you could kind of see from where all these thoughts come, especially like even celestial dragons, they kind of have normal human lifespans, it seems, well, for one piece, but from just from their position, they see regular humans, probably also like insects or something like this. And uh, yeah, th that's of course a horrible point of view. And in my opinion, um, talking to Saturn, I do feel like about insects, I don't look at them and not see them as living beings, you know? Um, like, I know that they are also alive. Maybe they don't read manga and uh, don't, like, do the same things as we do, but they still feel and they still live and they still, like, eat and move. And uh, I don't want to just step on an insect. I would be upset if I accidentally do it and they die. The only insect that is my enemy, these are mosquitoes. But we are not on good terms. We have like an all-out war and kind of cockroaches. But I have to say, like, if I see a cockroach and I kill it, I do kill it, but I always say sorry. 
I, I do feel bad for every insect, to be honest. Like, uh, maybe the mosquitoes are the only ones that we kind of hate each other, but, like, usually I wouldn't want to kill an insect. And um, uh, I think the way he says these things, it shows that he has no compassion whatsoever. Like, to, either to insects or to humans. So it just shows how heartless he is. Wow, is it a pacifist? No, look at his palms. He has paws. Ooh. This is an urgent report from the southwest coast. Wait, this is... Is this our coast? Or is this... Uh, he fell on egghead, right? Um, yes, I, there, there, that's happening all here. The ex-warlord of the sea, Bartolomeu Kuma, has made landfall. He's heading straight for the center of the island. Our authority chief commands aren't working. We can't stop him. Ooh, that's exciting. That's exciting. What a fiasco. How could Kuma possibly be here? And I feel like that's, that also should show that there is Kuma. There's some Kuma remaining. There is this connection to Bonnie, at least. This desire to protect Bonnie. It shows that there is some of Kuma, some of his personality inside of him somewhere. I can't hold on. Bonnie is thinking to herself. I'm so scared. Gosh, I'm kind of starting to cry already. I'm so worried. He's here. How? Vegapunk is shocked. Stop him. Fire at will. Yes, so I can't force myself to speak anymore. They did. Feels like my heart is shattering. Like, Bonnie and Kumo's, like, relationship, father-daughter relationship is just killing me right now. Uh, okay, so, yeah, she can barely hold on, and it feels like her heart is shattering, obviously, from all of this. And he's running to help her, and even though these marines are shooting him, and he can also barely, like, physically hold on, he still keeps on running. I... Open fire! Don't stop till you're out of ammo. At this point, I think I'd better, I'd be better off dead. This is it. This is what she's thinking. Gosh, I'm so sorry. It's all that shrieking is unbearably noisy. You insufferable vi wife. <laughs> wife? I'm not sure how to read it correctly. It just sounds like wife. <laughs> When I tried to read, but that's what Saturn is saying. I guess that's some maybe synonym for girl or something like that. Blow her head off, he says. Oof. So he was kind of open to conversation with her, maybe because it's like one of his experiments. So he kind of not sure if he should get rid of her, but now he's like, ah, no, you're too annoying. Just blow her head off. Don't, don't care about it. And uh, wait, a lot of things is are happening. So Marines are having Kuma in their sights. Now there is a huge explosion, but it doesn't look like anybody blew Bonnie's head off. I'm so sorry, Daddy, you fought really hard for me to leave, but so Saturn drops her and is going to use his uh, horrible claw from his leg, I think, one of his legs, uh, to stomp on her, but a hand with a paw comes in, I think, just in time. Let's see next page. Oh, fuck. That's a double page, and also the last page, and Kuma is here, protect gosh, protecting her with his body, he is holding Bonnie, and she's so tiny compared to you, like, holy shit, the sizes, like, <laughs> and he takes on the full impact of uh, Saturn's, uh, maybe claw is not the right word, but I'm sorry, he's more like a spider, I'm not sure how to call, like, what spiders have on their legs, <laughs> but, oh, and yeah, as I, as I thought, he came here, to protect Bonnie, that's like the instinct uh, he had as her parent. And she's yeah, like, imagine, she gets reunited with him. And like at that moment where he protects her and then it takes that uh, blow for her, it's Bartolomeu Kuma and he 
grabs the claw, turns around and goes in for a punch. <laughs> oh gosh, and Bonnie is back to her like small form crying. And the panel with Kuma is also just perfect. It, it looks great. And Saturn is super shocked and the chapter ends with words father oh gosh I can't read a father's fury. Okay. Uh these chapters they are just like especially if we had time to establish their relation their bond between Kuma and Bonnie and so now we are kind of more invested in them, right? And so seeing the scenes like this, it's just a really heartbreak. It's really hard. But that was a very interesting chapter. I think a lot of pretty cool information here about the devil fruit infusions and really showing that, yeah, Kuma has some like emotions, some personality kept still in him still intact so kind of gives more hope if he survives this fight of course uh, physically we know he's very tough but even very tough people can die his father unfortunately has died for example right so maybe if he survives this fight physically he can also be restored mentally and we know about like some experiments that world government was doing and yeah i think there were there were a lot in interesting moments and i wonder like we also had that sapphire necklace here in the back like the conversation between her and vegapunk and didn't really come into play but it was shown very specifically i think something should happen with it definitely it's not like they're just going to show us this sapphire necklace and nothing will ever happen with it right obviously Oda has uh, some plans for it so i'm curious about it but what are your thoughts on this chapter and what's going to happen uh, with the sapphire necklace and everything uh, what are your opinions on this like, devil fruit experiments with infusion and what was your favorite moment of the chapter i'm just I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Uh, this panel with Kuma holding Bonnie is, of course, just like, yeah, very emotional. But I feel like there were a lot of really good panels. I think Bonnie's emotions were very raw. And uh, that that little talk with Vegapunk was really sweet. So I think that there were a lot of really cool moments in this chapter but yeah i think that would be it for today this recent chapters with like whom and bonnie they just destroy me i just can't so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the chapter as well as my reaction but that would be it for today so see ya mm -hmm.